Rick Dior, and today we're going to be working on Master Studies with Joe Morello. You probably couldn't tell from all that, but this will be part two of the Master Studies series that I'm doing, how I use that book to work on my technique. So what you saw there were a number, maybe three or four, different foot ostinatos. And over on top, I was playing different accents and patterns and rudimental kinds of stickings with my hands, making them into sort of a quasi-Afro-Cuban, quasi-Brazilian solo. You might notice I'm a little bit hoarse today. I have some sort of cold respiratory thing. I hope it's not the virus. I don't think so. I feel okay otherwise. But I'm having a little trouble talking and speaking, so I apologize for that. But hopefully this will kind of beat it out of me, pun intended. So anyway, if you have my book, you need to turn to page 37. And those two pages, 37 and 38, are going to be foot ostinatos for the drum set. Now, there's lots of ways to work on these. One of the ways, and I've done this in another video, is to play rudimental etudes over these kinds of foot ostinatos. But one of the first ways I ever worked on this was using Joe Morello's Master Studies book. Now, when I studied with Joe, we really never worked on any drum set. Uh, in other words, he wouldn't assign me things or anything like that. It was mostly all hand technique. But at the end of every lesson, our lessons were long, sometimes two hours. I was usually the last one. We would play drum set for maybe 20 to 30 minutes together. Trade fours, just play together, play grooves. It was pretty much the most fun I ever had in my life playing with him like that. And um, through doing that, I always noticed that Joe played a lot of ostinato-based kind of solo ideas. He would do um, kind of the Muller technique with his hand and play with his right hand over that and solo, which was just amazing to see that. There's probably some stuff online you can find of him doing that. He was very fond of that. So what I did was I kind of took that idea that he had of playing the ostinatos, but I put them on my feet instead of my hands. And I started practicing his book, most notably the first two accent sections, starting on page seven, going through the eighth notes, and then the triplets, all with different foot ostinatos. And at that time, I didn't have my book written. I was probably you know, 16 years old. Um, I started writing it when I was in my 20s, but I would write little ostinatos on a piece of paper, and I'd work on each one for a couple months and then write another one, till I had about 25. And those 25 are, are what you see in my book on pages 37 and 38. And they run the gamut of just a regular samba ostinato, which is this. to really weird stuff where I'm playing clave, but opening the hi-hat like this. So those kinds of things maybe took, you know, a year or so to develop, where I could play anything with my hands over that, so. So that came from playing the rudimental etudes, like the Wilcox and the Pratt, but then also working on these exercises in this book. So it made a huge difference in my playing and my control. Now don't think for one minute this is going to make you sound mechanical. The whole idea is not to go on a gig and start playing these exercises. The idea is to build your coordination and your technique that, uh, so much that you can do anything that comes into your head without skipping a beat, literally. All right? So let's start out, and I'll show you how I work on these. We'll take the simplest of the ostinatos, which is just the bare bones samba ostinato, which is number, let's see, yes, it's number four on page 37 of my book. So 
most of you know that one. If you want, you could put an accent on the sordo note like. But I would just suggest playing it straight first to make it a little easier on yourself. And that's what I'll do for you guys today. All right, so what we do is we start on page seven of the Morello book, put the metronome on something like maybe 108. Actually, you don't have to start that fast. That's where I normally do it. You know, maybe start at 100 if you can. If not, slower. You got to have a certain amount of tempo uh, to do these, no slower than 90. So if you can't do them that fast, work on, work on them on your practice pad until you can play them that fast and then put them on the drum set. So this is half note equals 108. So it would be 216 quarter note. So I played each one of those uh, exercises four times. I would suggest doing them more. I'm just trying to save time here. And you know, you could do them as much, uh, as many as 50 times each. And you saw I was bringing out the accents pretty heavily, but I'm not tight. I'm trying to remain loose. Now you can also do those around the drums. So. great to do that too because the toms the response of them is a little meatier it'll kind of suck you in so it gets you used to playing that kind of thing and just be uh, experimental about it but keep those stickings and the accents like they are now what you can do is do them in cycles of five the book works like that because there's uh, ten on each page and then if you do five uh, each each ostinato will do five so if we go to another one Let's look at number two, that's a fun one, and that's this ostinato. Now many of you will find this very difficult because your hi-hat is now playing a different rhythm that's not straight. It's a two-cell rhythm. So one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four. Let's try that with the next five. So I'm, I'm going on to page uh, eight, uh, eight, correct, on the... Um, in the Morella book, and we'll do uh, six through ten. So there you have that. And you can proceed through as many of these ostinatos as you can get. I might spend a month on just one of them. Now, uh, if you have my book, you have all the recordings, and therefore you have all of these, uh, well, most of these ostinatos recorded, played with different exercises so you can hear them like that. Now, there's also, like I said earlier, some clave ostinatos. And there's four of those. All the claves, soon and rumba, two claves, and then two, three, and then three, two. So if you remember from some of my videos, they sound like this. So 
was actually a two, three, soon clave. And again, these exercises were great over that. So let's try the next five from 11 to 15 over that clave pattern. did the first one, um, number 11, eight times so I could warm up. <laughs> so you see that's how that works. Now you don't have to play all the bass drum notes. You can just play the second note if you want, like, or you can play both notes. But whatever you do, play the last note softly, not too loud. Next we move on to page 38 of my book and page 13 of the Morella book. These are much more difficult. These are very polyrhythmic. So we're going to have a two against three feel. If we look at number 19 in my book, which is this. You see that's two against three. Hi-hats and three, bass drums and two. And then the exercises will be following that dotted eighth note. So the metronome will be on that dotted eighth note as well. In other words, it would be quarter note equals 155 for the Morella book. And then in my book, on number 19, that 155 would be the dotted eighth note. I know it's tricky, but it'll be easier when you hear it. So we'll go through maybe the first four on page 13. So now we move on to page 34 in the Morello book. This section, five stroke roll combinations, seven stroke roll combinations. Uh, this section is one of my favorites in the book. I played this on the pad when we did the original video of, of the Master Studies material. So we can use uh, the same 12 8 ostinato, 6 8 ostinatos with this.
that's mostly correct. That's page 34. What I was doing, I played the, the exercise on the snare drum, and then I played it around the drums, and then I played a couple bars of time, maybe two bars, four bars. So I suggest you do that. Play some time in between, then play the exercise once or twice, and then play it around the drums, and then go on. And that, you know, becomes a little bit of, a, of an etude all the way through. Let's do um, number 23. That's a good one. So that sounds like this. And we'll turn the page and let's do some others. Let's do these five and seven stroke combinations with that. One, two, three, four. mistake just keep going it's the whole idea the whole concept of it is to just improvise and that time in between again you can do as many bars as you want until you're ready to go on to the next one so I practice these probably every other day just to stay loose to play around the drums they're very difficult but make sure you do it with those ostinatos and the metronome you can even go on to the nine stroke roll combinations those are really tricky so Those are tough. A lot of notes there. So I hope this helps you um, with your technique. This is such a great book and there's so many ways to use it. The next video I'll do will go back to the pad and I'll do some of the fill-in exercises towards the back of the book which are really tricky. And on those he's using the Muller when he's writing those. That's the technique he had in mind for those. So we'll see you next time. Thanks.